it is might as well say it's lunchtime here where I am I just completed a work day with um, my hospice job I'm gonna address some things in this video especially about my experience with hospice um, I was hired in maybe the end of September with uh, the company Legacy Hospice as a part-time uh, employee uh, I only wanted no more than 30 hours a week my first week I trained with another seasoned uh, hospice aide and the next week I was out on my own um, that first week out on my own everything was pretty good um, I've seen all my clients but as time went on I noticed Mm. I wasn't really getting a whole lot of patients on my own. Before it was ended up, I ended up with five regular patients, but a lot of things influenced that. Five to six regular. Uh, a lot of things influenced that, though. Um, my uh, patients would die sooner than expected. You know, I would get maybe two three visits in and they're gone. Um, and that happens with hospice. And I was getting about, for, I'd say for about the first four weeks uh, on my own, I was getting about the 30 hours a week. I was doing pretty good, you know, at least 28 to 30 hours, sometimes more than that per week. Um, and my checks were pretty good, you know, part-time money. Um, I'd have to say with the gas mileage and the the uh, hours, it, the checks were like really good. Um, but as time went on, um, and keep in mind, I've only been with the company, um, well, you might as well say almost three months, a little under three months, it's 12 weeks. Um, this is probably the 11th week or maybe 12. So a little under three months I've been with the company. Well, it seems like only time that I would get enough hours is like if a CNA, the other CNAs or hospice aides wanted off or needed me to help out, then I would get the time. But then on my own, I did not get um, the hours like, okay, for the last few weeks, I, like this week, I probably won't get but maybe a little under 15 hours. And uh, last week, I might have got barely, just barely 20. And, well, for the last three weeks. And then a couple of weeks ago, I went in to work. And the supervisor, we always have Monday morning supervisor meetings, staff meetings in the office, in the hospital office. So she says to all of us in the meeting that since the admissions are very low, um, when it, by this time next week, I may have to have all, let all of my part-time CNAs and nurses go, all my part-timers go. So that was me and one other CNA and a nurse. Um, so I just went into survival mode. I, I started looking. I started looking around for work. Uh, and I found it. I, I found another opportunity um, to do during the week. I just, you know. And then before the week was out, okay, the supervisor said, well, it looks like I'm going to get to save everybody's job. But. Yeah, save everybody's job, but I'm still not picking up the hours that I need. Um, I need something with a little bit more stability than 10 to 15 hours a week. So I found something um, that I can do during the week part-time. And as you know, I still if you've seen any of my other videos, I still work at um, my local nursing home. Um, on weekends, and I've been doing that for about 16 months. Um, 
and that's worked out great for me. Um, but I did tomorrow. I turned my two week notice in after I found my opportunity, uh, and tomorrow will be my last day with hospice. But um, my experience with hospice is good and bad. There was pros and cons. Um, I this saw some things that I did not like. That particular company that I was working with, not the company, I think it was just going on locally in the office that things that I didn't like. But you know, they had to make sure all of their full time staff had patients, and they said that was more first priority over part time, which I understand. They have to keep them busy, uh, and we're just there part time, uh, so I guess we are easier to let go of than the full-time people. So, with that being said, I will be turning in all of my equipment uh, with the company. Um, and they give me a phone to clock in by, keep up with all of my point of care, um, charting and everything when I go out and visit a patient. Um, I'm not gonna knock hospice, um, if you don't mind flexible hours, as a part-timer uh, with this company, I don't know how the other companies, because I can't speak for them, but I know with part-time, your hours may not be guaranteed. Full-time, you may, you know, you since you have more patients to choose from, you, you uh, are more guaranteed uh, patients and hours. But as a part-time worker, you're not guaranteed that, you, you know, they're only going to assign you so many patients. Um, to really make a difference, I would have needed at least 10 people. I'd say uh, I have five, so I would have needed at least five more people. And that would have gave me 10 people to make a decent week to keep my days filled. Because I, when I signed up, I told her I'd like to do Monday through Thursday you know, and, um, but the admissions just wasn't coming in, uh, so that's had a lot to do with why, um, I guess my stay there wasn't as pleasant, but the thing is, I, I don't understand why they hired me in in the beginning. I guess they thought that they were going to really get the patients in. You know, I guess it's not as easy as you think to get new hospice clients, you know, and keep the everybody fully uh, filled with patients, keep, keep them busy. So they did what they had to do, you know. Um, but that is that. So that's my experience with hospice. That's all I can tell you right now. Uh, the pay with them, um, they talked me out at this company, and this is the only company in this area, and I'm in, I like I said, I'm in the West NC area, uh, that pays as much legacy hospice that I've seen on Indeed. They pay like $15 an hour. That was the top out pay that I got with them, which I could that uh, I I'm not going to complain. That's pretty good money, you know. And with the gas mileage, your check, if you're full-time, you're going to, uh, and you're seeing the people, you're you're going to bring home at least. If I was bringing home, my biggest check was over $1,200 for 30 hours. And uh, I didn't even get a, I got a, you know, the gas mileage. My highest gas mileage check I got I looked on my check stub. I think it was like four, over four hundred dollars, on top of my my other money. So they add all of that in with your that gas mileage check. They add it in. So I'm gonna say those full time CNAs are making anywhere from three. That's just my guess now. I don't know because I haven't seen it. But if I was making twelve hundred dollars just for part time money, and 
that was good. Twelve hundred dollars. I wasn't expecting to get that much. And if and if I'd have been full time, just imagine what those ten extra hours. And sometimes they're working more than ten hours because you're out there. Say you start at eight o'clock, and you got seven people to see, and you're doing that every day. You're gonna get like sometimes close to fifty hours. So them girls are any probably making anywhere from two at fifteen dollars an hour if they're getting top pay. The ones that getting top pay, uh, they're gonna be pulling anywhere from two to four thousand a, a month. In. And that's pretty good money, you know, if you don't have a whole lot of debt. Uh, some people might say that's not nothing. Well, it may not be, but, it, you know, I'm, I'm a just an old poor, poor country girl from, from Tennessee. So, you know, and I live in rural Tennessee, so it's not a whole lot of opportunity. So that's pretty good money when you live out where there's not a whole lot of opportunities to bring in. And I got asked a question by a viewer, how do I handle burnout? As a CNA, um, well, I've gotten burnt out many times over the years as a CNA, especially working the nursing home setting full time. Uh, I'm just going to give you my take on it. Okay, I, I've already probably mentioned this, but I started doing this in '87. Uh, on the summer youth program. Did not have to be certified. I just did it for a summer. And uh, I think I was like 16 years old. I might have been 17, 16, somewhere in the ballpark. And I did it for a summer in the hospital. So that was my first experience as a CNA. And I was just a nursing assistant because I wasn't certified. But in 96, I started out at my local nursing home where I'm working at now part-time on weekends. In 96, I um, was hired in and I went through the training class and got certified that year in that summer. It was the summer months that I was certified. I think it was like June of 96. I think that's what it says on my license. June of 1996. Okay. I worked a good, I don't know, it was six months to a year and went on and did something else. And for about 13 years, I did not do CNA work. I, I did factory work, fast food, mainly factory work. And I was in the insurance business too for a while. I sold insurance. Um, and I have extensive experience of, um, as a solo uh, insurance agent and captive agent. But that's a whole other subject. Then eventually, in 2009, oh, and I did retail. I did just about every aspect of work that you can name. Fast food, retail, factory, um, whatever was available in my area. And that's mainly what we have here. Factories, uh, fast food, and not a whole lot of factories. Um, fast food, and retail. I did that. And also cleaning. I did uh, commercial cleaning uh, through companies. Um, but in 2009, I went and I went back to through a recertification class and uh, of a CNA for CNA uh, at this local nursing home I work at now. Um, and when I went and took the test, well, they didn't put 2009 date on there. They put the original date on my license and that was that date of 1996. So that's the good part about becoming certified the first time even though there was some years between the three original certification. Uh, they honored that original date of 1996 when I first got certified. So my license um, um, has 1996 on it so that gives me that's like what oh my god that's like 26 years they're giving me in total for experience um, of course they don't have no recollection of what i did when i was a teenager in the hospital so that's 26 years and then you add um, 1987 uh, the summer of 1987 from 96 
so that's 11 years so that's about it's hard for me to remember off the top of my head oh what 35 years something like that that I have if you go back that far I mean as far as working off and on as a CNA um, and I'll be 52 this month um, but since 2009 this is mainly my main job I've, I've been a caregiver CNA certified nurses and assistant that's mainly been my main income source since 2009 and when I went back in 2009 um, I was hired in at 8 35 maybe I, yeah 835 yeah and so I stayed at the nursing home from 2009 to 2012 um, and I finally started doing home health uh, I did home health from 2012 to 2015 I did home health um, I took care of a lady in her home through a company, and so I went from making eight thirty-five to thirteen dollars through the home health company, and I worked with that home health company from 2012 to 2015. In 2015, I went back into a facility. Um, it was more like a rehab facility for like people that has had surgery and they need help. Um, getting back strong again after having hip surgery, heart surgery, you name it, any type of surgery um, or knee surgery, any of that, 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 that require them to have therapy, physical therapy. So I would do go in and help them get dressed and um, prepare them for therapy and help them. They may need help with eating. They may need, they you know, anything that we take for granted, these people would need help for, like putting our clothes on, bathing, brushing our feet, just any little thing that we take for granted right now, they need help. So I work with them from 2015 to 2018. I worked with that company, um, and it was um, about 45 minutes away. So I transferred from that company to... Uh, where I am now in 2018 I work um, at my local nursing home from 2018 to 2021 this is where I got burnt out in 2021 it was April I left this uh, nursing home and went to the factory um, for four months I did for factory work from April of 2021 to August of 2021. I did factory work, but but what led up to the burnout? Okay, we had there was a new staffing coordinator um, that had taken on the position. She come up with this schedule. Uh, we would be off one week, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Go back on Monday. Work Monday, huge day and be off okay we'd be off okay no we wouldn't be off monday tuesday the weeks that we had to work friday saturday sunday we would work that weekend friday saturday sunday 12 hours because they went from eight hour shifts to 12 hour shifts in 2019 but from 20 from 2019 to 2021 we was working these weird shifts. We would work, like I said, the 12 hours, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Instead of letting us off that Monday, we would come back in and work a half shift. Now, this half shift could be from 6 a.m. to 12 p.m. or 12 p.m. to 6 every other week. And then we'd be off that Tuesday. So we literally was off one day and had to come back and work Wednesday, Thursday um 12 hours and then you'd have those three days off so i did that for like three years 
I, I, it, I just could not. My back, I mean, I was already having back issues. And we'll get on into that here in a bit about my back issues. But I just could not, um, couldn't do it. I, I had, I just, and a lot of the full-time CNAs left that year in 2021. I think I was the first one to leave. And then there was like a, I don't know, a domino for everybody else started leaving. And, um. I left. I had to go. I mean, and when I left, I was I was making fifteen dollars an hour. I left uh, making fifteen dollars an hour. Um, it was, but it was just too hard. It was a grueling schedule. And with back issues, if you got any kind of back issues, and I think this type of work that I do has contributed to my back issues. Um, when my back took out on me in, oh, oh, probably about eight or nine years ago, I couldn't walk for about a month. I had real bad sciatic nerve pain, and I hurt something terrible. And I went through uh, therapy, and I did everything they said in therapy, and I was able to walk. And I thought I was gonna have to go on disability, but it. I guess a lot of factors had contributed to it. You know, uh, working those grueling hours back then, and you got to make sure you wear the right shoe wear. Make sure your feet are comfortable, because if you're working on that concrete um, all the time and you're on your feet in a CNA in the nursing home setting or maybe hospital too. You're going to be on your feet pretty much a lot, especially those first six hours at the nursing home sitting. You will be on your feet um, because you got a lot of stuff to do in 12 hours. Um, you got three meals to go through. You got bathing. You got passing ice. Diff just different things. You answering call lights. Just you just on your feet constantly. And that's the first thing. Make sure you have comfortable shoes. Like, I can work 12 hours now, and my feet never hurts me. It's my back. Because I always make sure. But that plays a part in your back issues, too, the kind of shoes you're wearing. So make sure your feet are comfortable when you're on your, on your feet all day. And I do. But uh, they did a scan on my back a few years ago. Uh, and they found that I had a de degenerating disc, um, which, excuse me, um, they said it was part of the aging process. So, yeah, I guess so. But I think the aging process and the type of work that I've done has made my back age that much more. So now I can't work. Uh, I can't work full time in the nursing home setting anymore, or any. I just can't do it. My body, my back won't let me. Uh, I, if I'm on my feet, say, four or five hours straight, I feel a burning in my back, in my spine area. So I have to go sit down, be able to sit down, uh, after a few hours and take a break. I cannot. I cannot do it anymore full time. My hat's off to you, you all that do. So, that's why when I went back, when I experienced burnout, um, I missed the profession. And I my money just wasn't right. I mean, that is, out of all the work I did, CNA work in the nursing home setting was the most stable for me. Right now, that's my backbone. I hate to say it, but it is. It's my backbone. Um, I went back to the same place I was certified in 96 in August of 2021. And I've been there. I've been working weekends uh, for 16 months now. Uh, haven't missed any. Hadn't called in or anything. Um, other than, and I didn't call in for that, I just went into work one weekend and I tested positive 
for COVID. So, you know, being in this environment, you're going to be exposed to COVID. Um, and I was off 10 days uh, for that. They pay it, though. They pay it. But other than that, I, it's worked out part-time CNA for me. That's all I can do, and that's all I'm going to try to do. And I have picked up hours at other nursing homes, but I just can't do it anymore. I cannot work full time anymore. I was working uh, Mondays and Tuesdays. Uh, so I was working four 12 hour shifts. And when it came to Tuesday, I would, I would be literally hurt. Uh, so I know that I can't do it. Uh, my body, you have to listen to your body. If your body says that you can't, you can't do it. And it's going to tell you Oh, the pain level is going to be there. It's going to be there to tell you and let you know, okay, Veronica, you can't do this. You cannot do this anymore uh, full-time. You just need to do it part-time. And that's what I do. Um, is it worth it? Well, I do have a living to make. So, yes, it is worth my time. Um. And also, I've gotten another raise. I just recently um, have gotten another raise. They gave me four more four more dollars an hour now. So I'm in rural Tennessee, and I'm living in a little small town, and I make nineteen dollars an hour as a TNA. So yes, it's worth it. Uh, and the part-time money really comes in handy. Um, I make, I mean, years ago, this that was uh, LPN money. That was what an LPN might would make. But CNAs now, in some uh, uh, with some nursing homes and companies, they're making as much as twenty dollars an hour. They're paying us better in these, and, and that's across the board. That's not just with. Uh, I work with. Uh, AHC, um, and that's the name of the, the, I don't know, it's American Health Companies or something like that, but that's the company that I work with. So, but I work with the uh, the local nursing home in my county, and uh, the pay is good, and that, and it's and they start to be that way across the board in the nursing homes that I have worked with. In this area but they won't give you the only reason they get they are qualified because I work set days now PRN people I think they're not giving them that raise of, uh, like that but they are people that are working set days part-timers and full-timers they're topping out at $19 an hour which is good money you know pretty good money. Like I said, I'm in rural Tennessee, so that's pretty good money for where I'm at, and, and there's not many opportunities uh, around. So yes, it's very worth it. Yeah, so it's worth every penny. The, the back issues, though, if you work wisely, the old saying, if you I know you've heard this saying, work smart and not hard. So that's what I try to do. I work smart and not hard. I work harder though on Saturdays and Sundays at uh, my nursing home job than I do the other five days. I try to find something like the hospice. I didn't work real hard with that. Uh, that's easy. Of course, the pay is not as much as I'm getting and working in a nursing home. Uh, now, the job that I found to replace my hospice job is like, I don't know if you've heard of direct support. I call them direct support professionals. You're working with the mentally challenged. Now, I'll be working with Easter Seals. Now, the pay with that is not that dandy. You don't even make $13 an hour, I think. I'll be making like $12.75. For 32 hours but it's stable so with the nursing home pay and the little 32 hours I get with uh, uh, Easter seals as a direct 
support person with the mentally challenged, my income will be stable because I got a lot of things that I want to do. Uh, uh, if you've seen any of my previous videos, you see that I am going to be starting a food stand business. Uh, so eventually I probably will just do my food stand business during the week and work as a CNA uh, on the weekend at the nursing home. But like, I mean, I've, I always, my mind is always going. I always come up with something uh, new as far as business-wise. And whatever I can do to encourage uh, CNAs um, or anybody, uh, I'm here to do that, to motivate you to be a self-starter, to go out there and be a businesswoman. Uh, make your paper uh through the time clock if you have to. But I would love to eventually just become my own boss. But, you know, you don't do that until you see fit. And I have went out on a limb many a times business-wise, you know. But there's one thing that I'm going to say. Uh, and I'm going to close this video out. Two, you got to be able to to not be afraid. If you're afraid to fail, that means you're also going to be afraid to succeed. I know the not knowing, it holds people back from trying things uh, and setting goals and doing stuff. I mean, they want to continue to clock that card and that's all they want to. Well, my money's for sure. Yeah, your money's for sure, but Life is short. You need to get out there. If you got something that you want to do, do it. And when you look back as an old woman or old man, you say, well, at least I tried. That's all I have for you guys today. And I want to thank you all that did watch my videos. Uh, thank you for watching. And uh, you, when you watch and you comment, you give me uplifting um you uplift me as well. So let's uplift each other. Um, and thank you all. And have a blessed day. Ta-ta.